Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast. This is my new website where I've organized all of my YouTubes. The specific area we're going to go to is this JavaScript glossary. On that, I have a listing of a tremendous number of keywords that you're going to encounter when learning JavaScript. You can come back here and get a concise but clear explanation of what that term means, along with some code examples. But today we're going to talk about arrays, arrays and objects because those two concepts are crucial for any object-oriented programming language, JavaScript included. Let's jump over to Notepad++ and look at the little web page and script that I've created to talk about arrays and objects. So I've got my basic HTML here. and I've got one paragraph with a, an ID of information. And in my script, I've got one, two, three different arrays. And I know they're arrays, because the variables are assigned to lists in square brackets. So that's the first thing that we have to tackle, is just to know that an array is a list. It's a list of information. Now that list can be strings, as in the student's first variable, student's last name variable, or they can be numbers, as in the scores variable. Or in JavaScript, you can mix your data. But that's pretty rare because that gets disorganized then in terms of accessing the information. Now, once we have the array created by assigning it to a variable name using the let keyword and the assignment operator, then we can access that on our web page. And I've got the console open here on my web page so we can see how that works. Now, accessing the members or the items in an array starts with numeric sequence of numbers, starting with the number zero. If I wanted to pull out that Lisa out of the student's first array, I would use this syntax, student's first zero. Position zero is Lisa, and that's pretty much true in all modern languages. The first position of the array is position number zero. Of course, if I wanted to pull out Doug, he would be position number one, and Kelsey is position number two, even though she's the third item in the array. And Aaron is position number three. Now, if I use the length property on that array, I see that the length is four. There are four items in that array. It's always important to realize that they start with position zero. So if I wanted to put one of those names up here in this paragraph of information on my website, I could declare another variable let information be assigned to document .get element by id information. Now, technically, any time you have an ID in your HTML, you can use that variable name down here in your script without the statement. I just think it makes it more clear as to what information variable refers to when you include it. So I like to include that. Now that I have that variable really clearly identified, I can say information uh, text content be assigned to something from one of these arrays. Let's go with students first position zero. Let's concatenate that to as a score of, and let's concatenate that to uh, the scores array position zero. And I'll finish that with a semicolon save and refresh. And so now we're learning how to pull information out of an array and put it on our web page with the text content property. So those are arrays. They are lists of information. That's all they are. And pulling that piece of information out, you have to use the square bracket syntax because the items in the array are organized in numeric sequence starting with zero. Let's compare and contrast that to objects. Objects use curly braces. So if I wanted to store this information about Lisa, her first name, her score, and her last name in an object, I'd have to first start out with curly braces. Also in an object, there's no numeric sequencing. We name our data with these key value pairs. Often this is called a key value pair or a property name and a property value. Those are basically the same thing. Put 
this type of information on the web page. We use the dot syntax instead of the square bracket and numeric syntax, and it would look like this. Information.text content. Let's assign that to Lisa, the name of the object, dot, which is the universal operator to access the properties of an object, F name, and I'll concatenate that to scored, and I'll concatenate that to lisa.score. And just to make sure that this is working, I'll put some exclamation points at the end just to change it. All right, save, refresh, Lisa scored 60. So that's how to pull information out of an object. So if you want to organize your information, not as lists, but instead all of the information for one item, you probably want to use an object because see how much more descriptive an object is? The information is given a name, it's given a property name, it's given a key, if not just sitting in position zero or position one. So I always encourage you to try to use objects when you're organizing complex data because it's just so much more descriptive. If your information is a natural list and I was keeping track of my students in my class and I wanted to do a list of of names or a list of scores, I'd probably want to keep those students organized together. So how do I create a new object for each student but keep those students together? Well, that's where our last example comes in, and that's an array of objects. So this is a very common way to pass data. So I've created a variable named students. I've assigned it to an array. I can tell that because of the square brackets. And each object then contains the information about that individual student. Just like any array, the items are separated by commas. It's common to put a comma after the last item just so that if we add a new student, that comma is already there. And then we need to be careful about the syntax of how we create objects in each of our languages. In JavaScript, we have the property name followed by a colon, followed by the data. If it's a string, it's in quotations or apostrophes. And each property is separated by a comma. So lots of commas between the properties and also between the items in the array. And to pull that information out and put it on the web page, we would do something like this. Information.text content is assigned to, let's see, if I wanted to pull out Lisa, I would have to go into the students variable and go into the first item in the array and then pull out the dot property I'm in this first item in the array and pull out her first name. F name, and then I'll concatenate that to scored, and I'll concatenate that to uh, students first item dot score. Save, refresh, and so I've got that information uh, up here in the paragraph, the information paragraph. If I wanted to put all of the students on the web page, I'd need some sort of loop that would go through the items in this array. And let's build that. Let's create a new variable, let all scores, and I'll assign that to just an empty string for now to indicate that it's going to be a string. And then I need to have a for loop that loops through the items in the student's array and pulls out the information that I want. And it will look like this. For let I, our counter, let's start at zero because we know the first item in the array is going to be position zero, and we're going to want it to run until we reach the students, the length of this, uh, which is four. If I doubt that, I can just come over here to my console and just figure out what that is, which is zero, one, two, and three times for the four items in my array. I'm going to increment it by one, and I'm going to come in here in curly braces, and say all scores, we're going to concatenate students position i, starting with zero, dot f name to text scored i dot score. We're also going to want a break between those, so I'm going to put in uh, a line break. And then I'm going to come in and say information.enterHTML, you are now all scores. 
and I had to use the inner HTML property here because I used some HTML to separate out each score on its own line. It's very common to pass data in a JavaScript application as an array of objects, and it's very important to know how to access an item in an array versus an item in an object, as well as being able to combine the two. Thank you.